OK. All right, so what I have here, ladies and gentlemen, is 9x squared plus 4y squared plus 36x minus 24y plus 36 equals 0. And again, what we're trying to do is we're trying to determine what the foci, um, the vertices, and the center is going to be for this um, ellipse. Now, for this ellipse, we know we can have a we can know that it can either be a ellipse with a major axis that's horizontal, or we could have an ellipse where the major axis is vertical, right? It's one of our two options. Now, for each one of these, these have different formulas, correct? The difference formula um, for a vertical one. It's, remember, it's x minus h squared plus y minus k squared, where since it's vertical, we're going to have a squared under the y and b squared under the x. And remember, this equals 1. The only difference if it's horizontal is now my a squared is going to be under my um, x. And my y squared is going to be, or sorry, my b squared is going to be under my y. That's the only difference in the two equations. Now you might say, what is the distance of a and what's the distance of b again? Well, remember, a is the distance from your center to your vertice, and b was the distance to your, from your center to a vertice on your minor axis. So a is always larger than b, always larger than b, unless you're dealing with a circle where they would actually be exactly the same, right? Um, so when looking at this, what we need to determine is first, we need to write this. Before I can figure out what the center is, which would be hk, what the distance of a is, what the distance of b is, what c is, right? Remember, c is going to be the distance of your foci from the center, right? So before we can even figure out all that information, we need to rewrite this in this form. So to do that, what I'm going to first do is group my x's and my y's. So I'll have 9x squared plus 36x plus 4y squared minus 24y equals a negative 36. As I'm just going to get the numbers to the other side, or the constant to the other side. All right. So now what we notice about our form, ladies and gentlemen, is that it's a, in, to find the center, we notice that it's in a binomial squared, right? It's in binomial squared form. So what I need to do to rewrite this so I have a binomial squared where I can be able to find out what the vertex is, I'm going to want to complete the square. So I'm going to want to complete the square for the x's, and I'm going to want to complete the square for the y's. But remember, when completing the square, we cannot complete the square when we have a coefficient in front of our quadratic term. So the first thing I'm going to do is factor out a 9. So therefore, I'm left with x squared plus 4x factor out a 4, 4 times y squared minus 6y equals a negative 36. Does everybody follow? Yep. So now I factor them out. And as you guys can now see in the parentheses, I now have a quadratic with a 1 as my coefficient. Now, to complete the square, remember we have to do our famous b divided by 2 and square it, right? So in this case, for the x's, I do, so my b divided by 2 squared equals 4 divided by 2 and squared. Well, 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So therefore, I'm going to say x squared plus 4x plus 4. Now remember, I'm adding the 4 inside the parentheses. So when I add it inside the parentheses, that 4 is being multiplied by a 9. So in reality, I'm not just adding a 4. I'm actually adding a 36. So therefore, if I add 36 on the left side, I have to now add 36 to the right side. right? So that's where that 36 came in over there. Now let's complete the square for the y. So b divided by 2 squared for the y is going to take me with a negative 6 divided by 2 squared, which gives me a positive 9. So therefore, I have plus 4 times y squared minus 6y plus 9. But again, ladies and gentlemen, we're adding a 9 inside the parentheses. And outside the parentheses, we're multiplying by 4. So 4 times 9 is 36. So since what I'm really adding is not a 9, but a 36 to the left side, so I have to add a 36 to the right side. All right. Then the whole reason why we complete a square when we complete square. When we complete a square, remember we're creating a perfect square trinomial that can be factored down into a binomial squared. 
So when I factor these down, I now get 9 times x plus 2 squared plus 4 times y minus 3 squared. Those add up to 0 equals 36. So I'm almost there, right? Yep. You guys kind of see how it's starting to transform? By me completing the square, now I got the numerators are looking pretty good. But I still don't have these denominators. Well, to get to those denominators, remember, each one of these equations equals 1. So therefore, I need this to equal 1. So to get 36 to equal 1, I needed to divide by 36. But remember, whatever you do on the right side, you got to do on the left side. So dividing the left side by 36, remember the 36 divides into both of those terms. Therefore, I'm left with an x plus 2 squared over 9 divided by 36 is going to leave me with 4 plus 4 divided by 36 is going to leave me with a 9. Okay, so we go ahead and take a look and now we've written it in this format and we can notice that the larger of the square terms, my a or my b, which my a would be right here, is going to be 9. So since the larger of my square terms is under the y variable, Am I now going to have a horizontal or a vertical ellipse? What happens when you have the A under the Y? It's what? What is it? Vertical, vertical, vertical. So therefore, can we let's erase this horizontal one, right? Because we are not really concerned about it. We just wanted to write it up there just in case we needed to use it. All right, so now let's go and use, use what we know. Remember, the center is H comma K, right? opposite of h, opposite of k. So there, in this case, our center is going to be negative 2, 3. OK, so we have our center. It's at negative 2, 3. The next thing is they're asking us to find the vertices. All right. Now, notice, ladies and gentlemen, how do the vertices relate to the center? Could someone give me any plus attribute that we could do? There is going to be a plus or minus. You're going to go up and you're going to go down. But there's something I'm looking for as far as how they relate to the center. Yes, they're on the same place, which we call the major axis. And we'll, in, this, in this case, you can say that the H is going to remain the same. Notice how the center. And these vertices, they all lie on this major axis. Why is that important? Because the h coordinate, which would be with this axis, is not going to change. So when I want to find the vertices, we know that the h coordinate is going to be negative 2. Now, obviously, this changes. If it was horizontal, the k would be the same, right? Because you're going to be going left to right. But here, it's just going to vertices is negative 2. And then we just need to figure out what a is. Well, we know that a squared equals 9, and b squared equals 4. So therefore, a equals plus or minus 3. So it's going to be 3 plus or minus 3. So therefore, my vertices are negative 2, comma, 3, um, comma, 6, and 3, I'm sorry, negative 2, comma, 0. Does that make sense? Notice how the h is going to remain the same. Now, the last one we have to deal with is the foci. And what you notice again about the foci, do we have some similar attributes with the foci? Where that is with the vertices, as far as the h being the same? Yes, what you guys need to understand with the ellipses, your vertices, your foci, your center, they all lie on the major axis. So now, I just have a problem, though, because I know that this distance was a, and we're given a squared. Right? But this distance is c. And in this formula, we're not given a c. However, if you guys remember, we did talk about in that relationship how to find the relationship between a, b, and c. Because remember, b, here's b. So what we did, remember, we used a right triangle, and we said that um, a squared was equal to b squared plus c squared? Right, 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 huh, huh, OK, good. So therefore, if we know a squared is 9, b squared equals 4, and now we need to figure out what c squared is. So we subtract 4. 5 equals c squared, root, root, c equals 
plus or minus the square root of 5. So now to find the foci, we're gonna, it's going to be negative 2, comma, 3, plus or minus the square root of 5. All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Can we just leave it? I, I want you to separate into the both two foci. But you can't simplify. I don't want you to give me a decimal approximation. So you'll just write negative 2, comma, 3, plus the square root of 5 and negative 2 comma 3 minus the square root of 5. Okay, And we talked about eccentricity a little bit last time. 2 is right, a little bit. All right, so if they ask you to find the eccentricity, yep, it's just going to be c over a. So in this case, our c is square root of 5 over 3. Okay. I remember the closer that gets to 1, the wider out we have you know, our, prob or our ellipse. And the closer that gets to 0, the more it looks circular. OK, that's it.